Massive, massive Twitch news. This is insane. So Twitch announced the Partner Plus program. This literally just came out. Oh, Twitch is live. Hey, today we announced the Partner Plus program. This new partner program benefit will offer a 70% share on net subscription revenue to streamers who meet the qualification criteria. So how does this work? Streamers in the Partner Plus program will receive 70-30 net revenue share on recurring monthly and gift subscriptions. It sounds like a TTS. For months, up to a cap of 100K. Because he's, 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 he's reading the thing. To maintain at least 350 he's, I think he's reading the article, right? For three consecutive months. Once that happens, partners will be automatically enrolled but like the, the next 12 months Mr. Instructor. to dip below the subscription threshold during that 12 month period. We plan to launch this program on October 1st, 2023. So they have a phasing the issue. The they have audio coming in from two sources. Is starting from July 1st and extending through September 31st. If you qualify, you will be automatically enrolled in the program and you'll be notified in October. So I'm sure many of you are wondering, why are we launching this program right now? So we created this program because we wanted to give streamers a benefit as they continue to grow their communities. First of all, I wanna say, as we thought about this, we wanted to make sure we were offering a benefit that would have a meaningful impact on those people that meet the criteria in terms of their lives and their ability to keep streaming. Target has been uh, um, trying to support streamers given our resources that um, we're getting to be or full-time creators um, so that we can help them in terms of sustaining their career. Uh, so Mike, a follow up. So why are Prime subs and gift subs treated differently? Prime subs are a benefit of Prime Gaming, which is a program operated by Amazon Prime. It's a great benefit for Amazon Prime members. And the Prime sub allows viewers to receive subscription benefits and support streamers, but a Prime sub is not a substitute or replacement for a recurring subscription. Dude, the it's Plus funny, program, like... We are focused on subscriptions sold by Twitch, which is a recurring paid subscription, and gift subs. You know what's funny? Now, the other question that's related to that is, why don't gift subs count? Well, we considered setting a higher threshold, which would have included gift subs, but at the end, um, it would have made it easier to game the system, which we didn't want. We wanted the fairest possible um, way for streamers to get the benefit. And then there's a bit of a gamification concern. That Dan happen, is so much uh, better on camera uh, than, like, you know, any other Twitch employee. World, et cetera. So like, really I, say, I, say, I say employee, any other, like, Twitch executive. Because that's often the foundation of your community, your stream. Because Dan your just, like, and, says, and like, really just talks and just says things. And I feel Great. like everybody Thanks, else Mike. is, like, in um, PR mode all the so, time. So, Laura, question for you. Why doesn't this include other metrics to qualify, such as hours oh, watched? Most streamers would have made more money. Thanks, Dan. So we wanted to keep the qualification as straightforward as possible. We thought it would be way too complicated to put multiple criteria in. So that's why we're focusing on this one. Once I qualify, what do I need to do to become a member of the program and start earning more money? He's also youngest S fan sub. He's not. So some of you have probably received our new agreement. It's called the Monetized Streamer Agreement or MSA because it's a mouthful. And you'll need to adopt that in order to receive the payout. So essentially, if you want to be able to receive the benefit in October, then you should accept the MSA no later than the end of September. Talk now about once I qualify, um, what do I need to do? Once you qualify, you are automatically enrolled. You don't have to do anything. Just better. remember that you do have to accept the MSA in order to receive the payout once you qualify. Great. All right. Thanks, Laura. And Wait, Mike, what? how's one it more, not better? How's it worse? Through, uh, and give me an example in terms of, of the um, qualification criteria and what does the 12 months mean and what yep. happens if I dip below 350 and how that works. This program will go live in October. We're going to start the qualification July, August, and September. So if you hit 350 during those months, as Laura said, you're automatically in. Now, if you step away, let's say December, <laughs> you took some time away, um, vacation, et cetera, you know, your sub count may dip, you're still in the program. You're in the program from- Can't wait for Critical to make a video on this so I know how to feel about it. Beginning of the year, January, February, March, you've reset the 12 months. So now you will extend it out from 12 months after you've hit those next three consecutive months. So we're trying to create a program that is flexible and accommodates, um, you know, situations that may occur and you're always pushing it forward 12 months every time you get three consecutive months at 350 recurring subs. Great, all right, thanks, thanks, Mike. And now we're taking some of the questions from, um, from chat. Why do you have to be a partner to receive this split? Say an affiliate is being gifted 
this many and has above the threshold every month. Thanks. Um, and much love to everyone at Twitch. Thanks to the architect. So Laura, why don't you answer this? Right now, you do have to be a partner in order to qualify for Partner Plus. Um, you, uh, <laughs> and so you also have to, as we mentioned beforehand, accept the MSA so you can receive the payout. Yeah, but one thing that's key to note is basically the <laughs> partner qualification criteria. Damn, um, uh, I didn't know I had to be a partner to be partner so plus. Anybody that is going to satisfy this threshold will qualify for partner. Um, and we've really, you know, worked as you know. Um, uh, we eliminated the exclusivity clause in the partner contract. So now, in terms of the differences for you in terms of partner, it's not called affiliate because we didn't affiliate you know, anymore. Some people, um, had other it's reasons, called but now like, anyone who meets the criteria, <laughs> you can go ahead and apply for partner, and we're going to be on top of that um, to make sure that gets processed so it doesn't negatively impact you. So if you qualify for this, you'll qualify for partner, and it'll be easy for you to get the benefit. Why wait until October? You already have the data. Look back three months. Uh, enable 7030 for everyone that qualifies. Mike? Yeah, we, we thought a lot about this, and one thing we didn't want to do is launch something and have people say, why didn't you tell us? And then maybe, you know, we would have done sub goals, we would have rallied the community around this. So we wanted to ensure that, again, fairness, um, we're announcing it up front, it'll go live in October, and something the community can rally around if they want to do that. Um, that's funny, Twitch, Twitch still makes more money because you have Twitch um, Prime. Yeah, you know, we have the Prime sub benefit, which is a meaningful benefit um, for many of our creators. Also, the ad rates are better on Twitch weekend. than on YouTube. If I mark my sub as cancel auto renew, because I like manually renewing, does that not count for the streamers 350? Mike? Uh, yeah, that would count. It's still a paid subscription. You've chosen to not renew it, but that would count in the qualification. Yep. And actually, since you give me the mic here, Dan, oh, that's actually interesting that question on, that they did on that. That's kind of cool. Because I, I missed, I so it's kind of dumb. Called me out on this a little bit. So there's two things here. The, the trade off for us was announcing in October when we were ready to launch the program. We have some work to do. And part of that work is sharing. A improving the way for you to understand how far you're progressing toward that qualification. Right now, you can do it in the dashboard. You can go look, dig in, find your paid subs, go look at it for the previous three months. But we really want to improve that experience. We have some work to do on the qualification side. So the timing wasn't necessarily, can we start it now? Because we're obviously not ready to. But to be able to announce it, get you guys in there in terms of thinking about hitting those goals, and then ultimately rolling it out when we're ready to pay out the uh, 7030. What about your more prominent streamers who make it much more than 100K from subs alone? Any fear of them leaving um, platforms? So, in Dude, 100K streamers, sub revenue before, is crazy. A big part of their revenue comes from ads and commerce, I mean, ads and sponsorship. Um, we were very intentional earlier to improve the rev share in ads. Um, yeah, we he's did right. Think that, um, and we've talked about this before where when we first came out with the CPM-based um, approach for ads, that actually was a good deal. Um, over time, we've gotten better at running ads. The only people uh, that's, like, not like good for us, like, like, like even for me, I mean, I don't even and think. That shift, if you're part of the AIP program, uh, is a meaningful shift. And for big streamers, it actually makes a um, significant difference in terms of the money that they can um, uh, make from Twitch. We ultimately think we The we 100K sub revenue challenge. Twitch, but also our platform, if somebody moves to somewhere else, we still greatly value them. We appreciate all that they've done on our platform. Uh, one reason why we removed the exclusivity is because we did not want to feel like everyone has to stay here. Um, that creates more opportunity for other streamers as they can grow. So this is one thing that we've been very intentional about. Um, and again, we thought a lot about it when we removed exclusivity because we thought like it was important for our streamers to be able to explore other opportunities and develop their career. And that's very true for our big streamers. So we're comfortable with that. Um, and we feel very good about our offering and our ability to service them. And I think many of them love the community uh, that we have here um, and that they're very So my about. sub revenue is less um, than okay, half of my Maloney. Twitch revenue. With the new Partner Plus program, um, also will it also be ongoing for streamers that will reach the requirements after the launch of the program? So let me just use an example. Let's say your community is growing. You, you didn't hit it in July or August, but September you hit it. You finally hit your 350. You hit it again in October, November. Uh, December 1st, you would start receiving the 7030 net rep share up to the first 100K for the next year. So this is a rolling ongoing thing. We'll be evaluating streamers. Um, if you happen to miss it for the first qualification period, we'll Maybe pick Brock up again. just stole the you from the month. Drip King. Yeah. Do people need to have the minimum of 350 subs every single day of the three months or only on the last day of the month? Mike? Uh, does not need to be every single day. This is a short answer. Yeah. It can be just total during the month. 
Um, Laura, will there be a uh, Twitch Partner Plus party Some- at TwitchCon? <laughs> <laughs> So we hadn't talked about that yet, but it's a, it's a good prompt for us to consider it for Vegas. Yeah, I guess, no, actually, Laura will give a slightly different answer. <laughs> um, Do you uh, tell, Dan? Yeah. I think the answer, to be clear, I think the answer, um, I would say, is no. Yeah. like um, uh, The reason for this is we're very Dan. conscious about not um, uh, having this be a status. Okay, um, we, we we thought about this. In fact, this was one thing we talked about and got very good feedback on. This is not. This is your business. See, that's what um, I love, and, it, dude. Uh, you make the decision about who you tell about this or not. Dan's um, like, we do not no, want to age. Do that. Uh, this is not equivalent to a different, like a, another group of partners that we're trying to distinguish and, and group together. Um, uh, this is what I was, this what I was saying earlier. Like it's like TwitchCon and how we do that. Obviously, we're always trying to uh, create events that will. Um, uh, Dan is uh, actually people, a very natural um, speaker. And that create a great experience, but this is about you and what you decide to do with that information. Um, all right, Switzerland. Do you plan to make things more comfortable <laughs> for streamers, such as payouts, quality of life, security, overall um, welcoming environment? So I think there are a number of pieces here. Um, I think, Mike, you may talk about um, payouts, but Laura, why don't you talk about some of the other aspects in here? So obviously, this is Dan was why do you about think? Why do you think that? We know that safety's really Because I think this is a good change. Prime Gaming, the quirky one. Great name there. Uh, why don't you give creators different ad pools to choose from? IRL streamers will have a vastly different audience than track mania speedrunners. Having the creators be able to choose from pools will benefit both the streamer and Twitch because you get more traction from This is a good answer, question. Right? I want to, like... Yeah, there's there's a lot packed in here, and I'll try to give you a short answer. So I think we recognize that... You they can't? Based on the content, different types of advertisers may... But I want to hear their answer. ...your audience. And so we are actively working to figure out how do we take your, you know, what you're telling us about your stream able to connect that to the ad tech so that advertisers can then, you know, um, find, you know, support those types of, of uh, streamers. The other part of this, too, is a little bit about a question that comes up often, which is, can you give me more control of the ad experience? That may be formats. I prefer more stream uh, in display ads or I prefer more audio ads. And then uh, there's also a common question about you know, there's certain categories where I may not want to see ads from. And, and so I think as we continue working to improve um, the ad incentive program, now building on that in terms of giving streamers even more options and controls <laughs> about the ad experience and the types How of How are you going to help the very so small streamers who want to reach affiliate but can't? Day. It's just something we're always thinking about and working on. All right, um, Mike, another question. Is it 350 <sighs> individual they didn't really subs answer, they, or they sub points? They didn't really uh, yeah, have the answer right. Up. Great question, and it is individual subs. Now we've heard this feedback that perhaps oh, it should um, be sub points. Sub should count more. Again, we'll, we'll consider it. Should be it. Sub points. Uh, we're not making a change right now, but it is based on unique subs, aka people, um, and not sub points. Yeah, um, memory. Uh, why you? Why oh, you I know why it's not plus, sub points. Um, it only applies to a small percentage of all streamers coming it's out because to people give will information. give a bunch uh, of tier three subs and tier threes give like um, and we think it's really important points. for us to come out, be forthright, honest right. about how we thought about this, what five? we're doing, uh, but we fully no, so understand and appreciate. Subs. Um, that for many of you, this doesn't so impact people can what you're doing. And so that means give a bunch there's of tier other threes, stuff and then they can need to do go back down to tier um, that will help you as a streamer. In particular, as we talked about before, I think That's a huge why. part of that it should is be sub-points, helping you grow. No, no, this isn't a rich get richer to, situation. Um, help this is, engage with you as much this is better for the middle tier here's deeply of streamers. It. Well, technically it helps everybody, but it helps the middle tier more. I just echo some of the things that Mike was saying. Absolutely, as you could tell, there's a reason that we are not full-time professional streamers. I think we stick to our day jobs, but we really appreciate all the feedback. <laughs> and one of the things that we are trying to do better for you, aside from being a lot more thoughtful about how we can continue to help you along your creative journey is trying to have more real time interaction with you. Hey, after so this, after this, this is quick, a quick break and then we'll talk. I have a lot to say about this. Let's go ahead and read the article, right? Just to make sure everybody under. Today we're announcing the Partner Plus program. It's a new program for streamers to build toward as they continue to grow their businesses. This new partner program benefit will offer 70% share on net subscription revenue to streamers who meet the qualification criteria. Streamers in the Partner Plus program will receive a 70 30 revenue share on net subscription revenue. Revenue recurring revenue from recurring monthly subscriptions and gifted subs for 12 months up to US $100,000. I thought it was no gifters. No, no, no. The gift, 
The gifters, uh, I'll explain that in a second. To qualify, partners must maintain a sub count of at least 350 recurring paid subscriptions for three cons consecutive months. That was the thing that was no gifters. Once that happens, partners will be automatically enrolled for the next 12 months, even if you dip below the subscription threshold during the 12 month period. The Partner Plus program will launch October 1st, 2023. Streamers that meet the qualification criteria in July, August, and September will be enrolled in the program and notified in October. Our focus has always been on inspiring, growing, and sustaining Twitch streamers all around the world, and we hope this new program demonstrates that commitment. For more information, please visit our FAQ. And for feedback, let us know your thoughts on user voice. Okay, uh, and it's Mike Minton and Laura Lee who were the two people that were with Dan Clancy earlier. I'm kind of surprised that I'm seeing some negativity to this because I feel like this is a hugely positive thing. Okay, I used to have a 70-30 split, right? People always talk about like the old 70-30 split and, and whatever. Most people, the overwhelming, the overwhelming majority of people had 50-50 pretty much any new streamer within the last like couple of years, right? I mean, yeah, you need 350 paid subs. That is actually a lot more subs than people think. Like for example, I'll tell you how many paid subs I have right now. I have, I have 1700, I have 1800 paid subs. That's a lot for beginner streamers. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's a lot for, for a lot of people, but I, I have 1800 paid subs. Uh, by paid, you mean not Twitch Prime? Yeah, by paid, I mean uh, not Twitch Prime and not gifted. I mean like tier one, tier two, tier three. A lot of big streamers have mostly Prime subs. Yeah, a lot of big streamers have a lot of Prime. If you reach that threshold of 350 paid subs for three months, your sub revenue will then go up to 70-30 split, essentially, right? Uh, at least for monthly and gifted, I don't know if it's Prime. Like usually gifted and Prime are categorized together whenever they talk about it, so this is interesting, but I also understand why, because these, these are paid and Prime is free. So <clears throat> technically they're paid because Gifted is still technically paid even though they're not considered paid subs. Because paid subs are like the recurring subs. Uh, I have 412 paid subs, so uh, I like barely even qualify. It's funny, I was gonna say that's probably about the uh, the range that I was gonna guess. I was gonna guess that like, <clears throat> if you're like a 1K Andy, if you're like a 1K Andy, then that's, you're, you're probably looking at 350 paid. But also when, when you have a smaller community, a higher percentage of people in a smaller community will typically be more, uh, they'll be more generous, right? People will sub more, people will gift more, all that stuff. Uh, now a lot of that comes from gifting more so than tier subs because there's like a finite amount of people that can tier sub because it's one person, one tier, but one person can gift as many subs as they want, right? Anyway, long story short, I, I see this as something positive. I, I think it's interesting that people are complaining about it because the people, a lot of the people that are complaining about it are, well, they don't have 350 recurring and, or they're saying up to 100K is, is not enough. When 100K sub revenue is a lot. Second off, the people that won't qualify for this were already getting a 50-50 split. So the old 70-30 split, this is not like an official stat. This is not an, like, this is not anything that was ever like on paper or whatever. Like estimation for getting the 70-30 split was if you had a thousand subs, if you held a thousand subs for three months. That's what it used to be. But it, like that wasn't official or anything, but that's just kind of like what people thought it was. Like that's what it was for me. Like whenever, whenever I, whenever I had a thousand subs for like three months is whenever I got somebody 30. Well, you know what? Proper pushback is usually good. I'm a big believer in this. When people push back on something or they get angry or up in arms about something that, that is uh, not grounded in logic, it's actually worse. Because what ends up happening is people stop listening to you because you're not being, you're not being intellectually honest. You're not acting in good faith whenever you're giving feedback. Now it's not as good as the old 70-30 deal was, but in some ways, this actually drops the barrier of entry. The old 7030, people thought it was like a thousand for three months, but like that wasn't ever official. This is like an official, and they mentioned it on the broadcast. They said, we wanted something that we could write down and say, hey, this is exactly how this works. I'm being very honest, just, just this is straight up. If you cannot make rent only live streaming, you should not be only live streaming. I'm sorry. Like, you should stream. Stream is a hobby. Stream is a side gig. Do that. But you have to find a way to make a living. Like, you have to find a way to pay rent. It's, yeah. It is not your career. It is It is not your full-time job. Like, like you, you need to understand that. And, and honestly, if you are streaming and not making that much to be able to pay rent and you're spending all day, every day streaming, not good. It's not healthy because, like, even for me, it's okay to have to get outside resources. 
it's okay to have to get another job when you're streaming. Most streamers, they do not just start streaming and that is their only thing that they do unless they are like very privileged to the point where they have their families paying for their streaming setup and they're sitting in their in their parents' home and they're just like they start streaming and th I mean, and they don't have to pay rent. You know, and for like adults who are on their own, they have to have outside outside resources. Yeah. I had to have outside. I out. Why do I keep saying outside? I'm Irish. I'm Irish. <laughs> outside resources, and I had to have that until you know. I think until I started getting like 1K viewers. You're hitting the nail on the head. Like even for me, I was now I had just graduated college. I was like a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and I was streaming on the side. I was out of a job. I was in between jobs. I was looking for another job in college football. I literally started playing on this vanilla WoW private server and making videos because I was uh, trying to stay in practice and I knew a lot about rep paladins and I was just doing it for fun, right? And I was like, yeah, this was, you know, for video editing and stuff like that, just kind of, kind of stay in practice with the tools of like Adobe Premiere and all that. Next thing you know, channel starts doing well. Uh, I start streaming, but again, I start streaming just, again, it's, it's, more than anything, it's like just for fun. And it's like, I'm trying to figure out the tech and stuff. And then next thing you know, my channel grows to be the, the big private server stream and all that. That was great, but that doesn't happen if I, first off, I was only streaming two days a week. I was doing other contract work. I was doing video editing, graphic design, all kinds of stuff like contract work on the side, streaming two days a week, uh, making YouTube videos as well. And I made in my first year of streaming, $10,000 in a whole year. The, the, my first year of streaming, I made about $10,000. That is not enough at all to, to survive. But my parents were very supportive and they let me live at home. They're like, yeah, live at home, whatever, take care of your stuff. I was streaming out of the guest room. Uh, oh yeah, I was working on my teaching certificate because I was like, okay, I want to be able to go. I was trying to look for a job in college football. Basically, I had a bunch of doors open and I, and I try to kick all of them open. Depending on which ones are open and which ones are locked, Right, and then you just take the one that, that is the best fit. Ad revenue Gifted is not subs. that much if you're trying. So, see, for me, like I try to run as minimum ads as possible so that I can grow my audience. But because that's, but like, it, a lot of people will try to do the opposite. But I'm a big, We have different. We have different p perspectives on what ads yeah. do for audiences. Yo, who is Grayson's here too. I guys, 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 guys. I think three fifty <laughs> is too much, dude. I, I for instance, okay. Yeah. It's just a little flex here. I have almost 4,000 subscribers. Get out. Yes, and I have only 410 month to month. And that's consistently streaming every single day for four years. Well, what's your average? Yeah, okay, well, now? Grayson. Like, what's your CCV? Uh, probably like 1,400. No, like before when you were getting that those numbers. Because now you're at 4,000. Like four 000. to like 700. It's like random, depends, but. Four to 700. Yeah, but you're like, mm. you have like a buff right now. Probably like you 350. Have, you have a buff right now because you have McConnell, he just farms okay, subs for you. That's true, but also it's like, I, I've, I'm i usually always like 2K plus subs. Right. Even before, but that, but even before the last month, I'm 2K plus subs, which is, that's more than enough to pay rent. Right. Like, I've been paying rent for like three years now. Have you been paying rent? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, sure? anyways, guys, uh, well, let's just talk I about that. I think I pay more th oh, okay. than you for rent. Here, this is what I was thinking. New game plan. Oh, I'm thinking about doing a scaling rent system where you pay one dollar per this is like per monthly your CCV. Lease at an apartment, guys. Yeah, so one dollar per monthly CCV. So if you average a thousand viewers a month, it's a thousand dollars. But if you're popping off that month, Dude, hey, if, if look, that's ever the hosts tax. Me, if S fan ever hosts me, I just go offline. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I don't hey, pump my viewership up. Hey, <laughs> I'm like no. That's no, the plan. Please. I just Sir. start hosting everybody, and then their view count goes up, and then they pay me. You know, and then you guys will hate watch them, uh -oh. so they have to pay more rent. That's not fair. Yeah, I don't know. I think that it's a good a plan. Goal in it. To be fair, you can be a full time streamer before a thousand viewers. Now, for me, I was not. I I didn't consider myself full time until I moved down to Austin in August of 2018, and I think I was averaging like 1,500 then. So that's whenever I was like, okay, I'm, I, I felt like comfortable and like, let's do it. We're gonna move out of the house and we're gonna we're gonna come down here. So to be fair, I I went like what I would consider to be full time, uh, kind of late. Subs or viewers? 
uh, viewers. I don't remember how many subs I had. I think I had 3,000 subs actually. Cause I was still working, I was still working in football and stuff. I just, I wonder what a lot of people have in. Oh, you can look actually, can't you? Twitch tracker. You can look yeah, at people's Yeah, but it's, it's not accurate at all. Is it really not? Yeah, it doesn't show people's subs also unless um. Like they have to share them. They're changing the name of uh, affiliate. What are they changing it? They're, they're going to call it the partner minus program because they thought separation between affiliates and partners was uh, offensive to people. They're, it's not. I saw this on Twitter. Program. They were complaining. It was really bad. So they decided to change the partner minus. Um. <laughs>